I'm Amanda Klutz, Broadway actress, dancer, and celebrity trainer, and I partnered with Equinox to create a custom AK Rope class. It's a rhythmic group fitness experience, and music is an integral component. Jump and sculpt using the rope in ways you've never imagined. It's time to get back to moving our bodies. AK Rope, my signature class, now available at Equinox, is a safe, fun, and positive way to do just that. Empire. Deal back to Hachimura. Um, first off, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It was more just shocking to hear from him and understanding that he gets the most assist from me and the most spoon-fed baskets ever. You know, the culture is actually damn good. To sit up there and to say you don't have a culture problem in the nation's capital, everything about the organization points to a culture issue. One guy took his in another guy's shoe. I'm a little pissed off about it, but I know how I am. I was kind of expecting it. It's disrespectful. It was like Eric Killmonger going for total domination. What's up, is my? We're not going to be fucking sunk this year with the Stanley Cup champions! Yeah! This podcast is all over social media, so follow us on Twitter at Beltway Bro Pod, Instagram at Beltway underscore sports underscore bros underscore podcast. Also the Facebook group, just search Beltway Sports Bros Podcast. And you can also find us at BeltwaySportsBros.com. There's a podcast player right on the front page. If someone you know doesn't want to or know how to download a podcast app or even knows what a podcast is, just tell them to go to the website and hit play. Simple as that. Thank you for joining us today. We are the Beltway Sports Bros. I'm Matt Vazana, and as always, my brother, Noel. Hey, real quick, check us out on the Podcast DC app. It's a new local app with hundreds of options in local news and health, all covering the DMV region. Download the Podcast DC app to hear all the Empire shows as well as the other great content. Also, help us out and rate, review, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing. Absolutely zero dollars there. So just do that if you don't mind. Five-star ratings are always important. And, you know, a quick review would be always appreciated as well. So, hey, Noel, how's life? How's everything going on your end? I was going to ask, anything else hat in hand you wanted to do before we got started? (laughs) I mean... (laughs) The ratings have not uh, gone up in a while, so, you know, just, yeah, yeah, just got to keep go. saying well, it. Just got to keep saying it. Hey, now that we got this Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing going, you know, I'm feeling good. Yeah. Life's good. Things are happening. Hey, big news. What's up? I know sports are starting to dwindle down. Our whiz aren't in it anymore. If you want to take a break from the little mini camp stuff, Euro 2020 this Friday, Italia, Turkey. I know. I got it recorded it on, on YouTube TV, ready to go. All the games. Yeah, man. Going to be hunkered down over here. Yeah, it's it's great for the summer and then potentially Olympics in August. So, you know, there's a little summer stuff going on, but Euro, definitely excited, man. Yeah, we should expect uh, different strains of COVID apparently at the Olympics they're talking about with all these people coming from all over the world. Could be a problem. It's just the athletes. They're not having crowds. No crowds are going to be there? No. Ah, all right. Well, the athletes from all corners of the world. A marathon runner from Kenya might might have COVID. I don't know. Or the blind strain or whatever the hell they're calling it these days. Who the hell knows? Just do the damn Olympics so I got something to watch in August, please. I don't give a damn. Well, we'll be able to watch women's gymnastics. I'm excited, man. And swimming. You know, you get to watch every once once every four years. In this case, five. <laughs> So. Yeah, exactly. No Phelps, though, so I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't tell you a single swimmer. Nope. Or gymnast. Nope. Well, that one girl. Uh, Biles. Biles. Biles, yep. Yeah. She just won yep. the seventh, uh, her seventh consecutive or just seventh in total U.S. national. So good yeah. for her. Oh, of course. You know? Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah everybody so. knows that. <laughs> and, but in bigger news, what about this fucking Julio Jones thing, man? Yeah, yeah. To the Titans? They didn't give up much. They really didn't. A second and a fourth? Uh, Were you saying that your Washington football team um, should have considered it? I don't know. I think anybody should have considered it for a second and a fourth, right? I mean, any team. He's one of the best um, wide receivers in the league. He was injured half the year, and he still put up nine weeks worth of numbers. Imagine this, though, with the top three wide receivers. McLaurin, Samuel, and Jones. You got Jones and McLaurin on the outside and Samuel playing the slot. Give me a fucking break, man. That's... uh. That's formidable. That would have been a little That's fun. formidable, but... Oh, well. It could be an NFC, AFC thing, maybe. You know, they didn't want to send him to the NFC. Washington's playing the Falcons. Teams are weird about that stuff. Well, one of the biggest things was Jones 
after this year, they're talking about him wanting to renegotiate his contract because pretty much the guaranteed money is gone. So that scared a few teams away that it could potentially be a one and done or they'll have to release him after the guaranteed money's off and then they've kind of lost out on that second and fourth. But I'd take a flyer on his ass. Hell with it. Yeah. Well, oh, well. But it's not to yeah, be. It's over. But hell of a trade for the Titans. I applaud them. Great job, Titans. Good job. Maybe we should become a Tennessee podcast. Hey. You know, obviously you're a big fan. No, big I, fan. I mean, <laughs> they're still all about the volunteers down there, no matter how shitty they are. So True up. All right. Well, speaking of the Washington football team, who had their first day of mandatory minicamp on Tuesday, and uh, guess who showed up, Noel? Yay! Bravo, Mr. Young. Excellent. <laughs> Good job. Way to show up for work. Bravo. Did you see his hair in that, like, uh, whatever thing they were doing? Julie Donaldson was fixing his golden locks. He's losing his yeah, mind. I don't know. It's kind of like a Pippi Longstocking thing going on there. I don't know what the fuck. I'm a little worried about this guy. He's a kid that's getting fame. There's better men out there, I'm sure, that have fallen flat on their face. So we'll see. Hey, as long as he's getting the quarterback, just get to the quarterback. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Who, who said that? On that NFL was Cower. Oh, yeah. Just get to the quarterback. He said it to like Greg Lloyd or something. Yeah. Um. So Chase had a media session after practice on Tuesday and he was asked if it was difficult for him not to show up at the voluntary OTAs the last couple of weeks and really just why he couldn't make it this was his answer I've been in and out phase one and two um you know this offseason I have a you know a lot of stuff going on I did five different shoots um for uh um for, for five different things um so I just been having a lot going on and uh you know I've communicated with my coaches and uh you know I'm uh, I'm ready to rock. I came out today. Um, was was playing fast, so I feel good. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing was just communicating with Coach uh, Ron and uh, Del Rio. And uh, as long as I'm locked in with them, they 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 they, they know I'm working. Yeah. So there you go. Great excuse, I think. I mean, he didn't even have to have an excuse. He just he was busy, too busy to show hey, up. Hey, Coach, I got a lot of shit going on, man. <laughs> Sorry. Of course, there's nothing that they can say about it. It's voluntary. They're not allowed to. It's just like when you go to your job and you put in PTO, they're not allowed to ask you what the fuck you're doing. I'm taking three days off. As long as those days are available for me to take off, I'm taking them. And you're not going to ask me why. I could be sitting naked on my ass on my couch for three days. They're not allowed to be pissed off about it because it's part of the agreement. So, of course, they're going to be like, sure, man, you do you. What the hell are they going to say about it? Yeah, well, it's disappointing his answer, you know, and it looks like five different things going on. I mean, that's not an excuse. That's bullshit. Seriously bullshit. And the fact that he, I guess, in his own mind thinks that that's a reasonable excuse could be even a bigger problem to me. There, there's something different about this guy, and I'm really worried about it. Well, look, nobody can deny the ability. Nobody can deny the football IQ that he has. But why is he acting like he's arrived? He definitely is. You were defensive rookie of the year. You had a phenomenal football season. Why are you acting as if like this is the... He reminds me of like the quarterback from any given Sunday. Yeah. Will it be me? Will it be me? (laughs) Dude, calm down a little bit. It makes the ladies. How about you do four things? (laughs) And you show up to OTAs, you know, and the funny thing is, Matt, when you're listening to that press conference, everybody's throwing up softballs. Well, it's Washington media. You know? It is like they were talking to Michael fucking Jordan mm-hmm. taking off OTAs. Well, listen to this one. He was actually asked about the opportunities off the field. Like, you want to talk about a softball question, right? First reason that he missed the OTAs. And it's just pretty hilarious. He's so happy to discuss what he did and why it was important for him to miss. Take a listen to this. I, uh, I had an Under Armour shoot uh, that's that's going to be coming out. That's pretty big. Um, had a, a shoot with eBay um, for watches. Um, and, and as you said, I, I did Family Feud as well. Um, so, yeah, that's just three things that I did this last year. This is- Hold on. Isn't eBay like an online garage sale? I mean, maybe I'm way out of the loop. Is eBay even a thing anymore? I didn't even know eBay did shit, let alone for to have an athlete promote it. If I wanted to go on there and find, like, Tecmo Super Bowl or some shit, you know, that somebody has an old beat-up Nintendo that is sitting in their garage somewhere. I I didn't know that they do, like, 
Is it the eBay watch? Yes, he's promoting <laughs> watches from eBay. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but is it... Like, are they like, used watches? <laughs> like, made by, like, you know, like, Kirkland brand for Costco? Is it, right. like, their brand? They sell Rolexes, you know, they sell Swiss watches, but also we have our own brand, our generic brand, the eBay watch. Is that what it is? <laughs> Who gives a shit what products they I are? I know, I know. I was just it's like, a- <laughs> I was thinking that was like, eBay? You know, this is very RG3-ish to me. He's so aloof and just proud of his other things going on. He's basically advertising on a press conference. Yeah, he was asked about it. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, I got my Under Armour thing coming out and, you know, this and that. Well, great. Fucking awesome. Six days of OTAs. There's no way they would have allowed you to work around that. Give me a fucking break. And why are they asking them the question as if they're like, how was your vacation? Right. Right. Like, you have a good time at Disney? <laughs> Like what the fuck, nah, man? man. I, I was just, I was just working, working. Yeah, I was just working. You know that 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 celebrity family feud, man. <laughs> like, like seriously, really? Yeah, really? It's absurd. He is the face of the franchise. Like we we said on the past show, Matt. He continues to say over and over again in this press conference about how he kept the communication open, and they're asking him. How does it feel to have this rapport with your coaches just that you can just all over do them. whatever the fuck you want? Like, where they'll just bend over backwards for you. It feels like the Beal situation, which we'll get into later. Yes, yes, we will. They're just coddling this guy and making him get even bigger of a head, quite honestly. I mean, they're not helping the situation. This is Fox News, <laughs> pretty much. It's like, hey. You're enabling the dude. Yeah, you're enabling him. And... Like, Ugh. It's disgusting. And Ben Standig, friend of the show, the Athletics Ben Standing, he asked about Young and his pretty interesting considering he didn't show up for OTAs as a captain, as a leader, as the supposed guy who's going to lead this culture change. He asked about the mainstays like Ryan Kerrigan and Morgan Moses gone. And does he feel any more responsibility to take even more of a leadership role? This is what he had to say. Do you kind of feel more, even more responsibility this year to be, to, uh, take on that leadership role because of these guys are, are not around? Uh, you know, not necessarily. Um, you know, last year, you know, last year I wasn't even really looking to take on that leadership role, but I was just being who I was, um, you know, being vocal. Um, and, you know, guys follow. So that's the same thing I'm going to do this year. I'm going to try to lead by example. Um, that's number one. So you just got to work. The guys got to know that you're going to be you're gonna work. Um, if, if, if I tell a guy to run off the field and I walk on the field, and what I look like. So, some of these guys don't know you. They know of you. They know the aura of Chase Young. They know the Ohio State Chase Young. They know the rookie of the year. But some of these guys are new to the team. Leading by example. Look, I wouldn't be this judgmental about it if other people didn't question it as well. But why is nobody making a big deal about this? Why is everybody being so fucking nonchalant at the fact that the captain of your goddamn football team decided to play fucking Family Feud and do an Under Armour commercial instead of showing up through walkthroughs or OTAs and then gets on here with softballs and him saying he's going to lead by example because he tells them to run off the field after a snap. Fuck you. You just showed up. You've lost all credibility. And that's the whole point of this. It's not so much that he's losing work by those six days of OTAs. And I said this last time, he's not going to get that much out of it. It's the fact that you are showing your face, you're showing that it's important to you too. Every bit of work that you can get in, regardless of how minute that it might be, how little you'll get out of it, it doesn't matter. It's being a leader. A leader doesn't need to be told to be there. If you didn't play a single down for those six days and you were in street clothes... And you were just there, interacting, Mm -hmm. being sociable, talking to the coaches, talking to the trainers, doing the little things. That's it. That's free money, free capital, man, with your team. That's it. Nobody's asking you to go out there and bust it about your hamstring and your ass and your ankle and your wiggling your toe or whatever the hell he was talking about. All that people want to see is your face and say, if Chase is here, we've got to be here. And the fact is, ironically enough, Matt, they were there anyway. Everyone was there. They didn't need to follow you. He was literally the only one who wasn't there. 
There were a couple guys that missed a day here and there for personal reasons, whatever the case may be. Jonathan Allen missed a couple of days, but he was the only one of the entire roster that missed every single day of six days. And I I still keep harping on the fact that it's six fucking days. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. It reminds me of when I'd be playing basketball outside for like two hours and then Pop would show up like 15 minutes before dusk (laughs) and then he'd be full out ready to go. And I'm like, dude, like, I guess I got to raise my game because he decided to show. Right. It's the same thing. Like, oh, all of a sudden now this guy comes because he has to. And now what? Dude, you need to be running off the field. Who? You're not Lawrence Taylor yet, dude. You're not Ray Lewis. It's really, really concerning to me. Yeah, like we talked about, he's going to be in great shape. He's probably going to kill it this season. If he doesn't, though, there's going to be questions. And it wouldn't have mattered if he was there for those six days. Don't get me wrong. But there is a trickle-down effect to this. If you expect him to be the leader, and he's the only one who missed every single day, what does that say to the rest of the team? The theme of this show, and I know we're going to be talking about Beal and crew later, The theme of this show is why make life difficult for yourself? Right. If you showed up, there would be no questions. If you bomb out this season, God help us if he does, please don't. But if we knew he was busting it there every single day and killing it and not having to show fucking YouTube shit or send a fucking video to his trainer, wherever the hell he was, nobody would question it, say, all right. He just had a rough year, whatever the case may be. No one would question it. You're just making life more difficult for yourself. What's up? It's Mike Jones from the Football Jones Podcast. I know you're enjoying your time with the Beltway Sports Bros, but once you're done, I wanted to invite you to come over and check out my podcast. Each week, we take a deep dive into some of the most pressing topics around the NFL. High-profile guests from the coach, player, and front office ranks, as well as the top league insiders. Check out the Football Jones Podcast, another fine product brought to you by Empire Media. Sick of competing against thousands of professional bettors with algorithms? What about spending all day analyzing salary caps and lineups using other daily fantasy sites? Then you should try Monkey Knife Fight. Amazing name, by the way. I've used most, if not all, the other sites, and trust me, I just stop because I don't have time to put all that work in. MKF is easy to play. MKF offers all of the major sports, plus UFC, golf, esports, soccer, college basketball, NASCAR. You can pretty much bet on anything your little heart desires. MKF offers fun contests that are super easy to play. For example, there's a game called More or Less. Simply pick more or less on different player props. Think Patrick Mahomes. Will he go over his 288 and a half yard number? Select more. Think Lamar Jackson. Will he stay under his 212 and a half yard number? Select less. Get both right and win. Simple, right? We're getting old. The less we have to think about, the better. I've been using this site personally for the last few months, and it's so user-friendly. And honestly, it's made me actually care about what happened in, for example, the Rockets Magic game the other night. Quite possibly the least interesting game in the NBA this year. So go to monkeyknifefight.com and use our promo code BELTWAY, and you get a free $5 game just for signing up. No strings attached, I promise. You also get a first-time depositor bonus, which they cover 100%. Deposit $10, you get $10 free. Deposit $100, you get $100 free. This offer is not going to last long, so tap the link in the episode description and sign up, again, using our promo code BELTWAY. So easy, even a drunk monkey could do it. This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends you new cartridges, so you never have to think about ink. Save up to 50%. You'll pay less than $5 a month for ink and never run out again. Find out if your printer is eligible and enroll today at hpinstantink.com. Conditions apply. For details, visit hp.com slash Spotify. Speaking of another guy that is making life difficult for himself right Bradley Beal so moving on to him uh, (laughs) go ahead yeah uh, as promised from Friday's show we're gonna go a little bit deep take a little bit of a deeper dive into Bradley Beal's closing comments after game five's loss to the 76ers last Wednesday Beal was asked about his future and the inevitable rumors about his future with the Wizards I'm sure it was a great one oh yeah he was really gung-ho right Matt very calculated this was his response is there anything you learned specifically this year about the gravity of rumors or everything like that? Uh, ultimately, I'm in control. Like, I'm not – I think that's my biggest thing is 
you know, people can report whatever they want, but, uh, you know, I know what, where my mind is and I know, you know, if it's not coming from the horse's mouth, then it's just going to be rumors. So, I mean, I expect them, I mean, they're shit, they're starting now. So, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. I mean, they're definitely going to increase a lot more this year when we go into the last year of my deal. But, uh, for me, you know, I'm just, I'm relaxing and, you know, resting my body and, you know, we'll evaluate all that, you know, once summer comes, uh, you know, I meet with Ted, meet with Shep. So there you go, uh, Mr. Not. Thank you, Fresh Prince Beal. <laughs> Relaxing and maxing, buddy. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, fuck you, Beal. I'm tired of this shit. And, you know, the young thing is a young kid. If, if this is a mistake, who knows? Maybe we're making a mountain out of a molehill. But this one is so goddamn played out. Yeah. This Beal situation. I am so sick of it. Just leave. <laughs> I'm over it, man. I'm completely and utterly over it. This wishy washy, we'll see crap. It's every you, year. It's the same shit. It is. And if you want to stay, fucking say it. He doesn't want to say it because I, I think that he knows what he wants to do, I guess. No, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I think he's just trying to, to play the. We'll see what you guys do. This is up to you, not up to me. What are you, like a poker player? Like, yeah. you know, you doesn't want to give a tell? Eat shit. This whole <laughs> thing was a- circled around you, asshole. They have no money left. They can do a mid-grade player at best at this point. And you're talking about they bring in Westbrook for you. They do all this shit circle this whole organization around you and you're like well and we talked about this before I'm so sick of it Matt I really am you know and I don't know what the future holds for this organization but I can tell you if Beal is here what are they going to do I'm gonna come up with a serious prediction here okay okay the prediction is is that if Beal stays Mm -hmm. he is gonna give an ultimatum of there needs to be a third a third player. A big three. A big three, so to speak. And we're going to lose a lot. Berton's gone. If they can trade him. If you can trade him. But if you're going for somebody big that has a contract, they're probably going to have to take that offload anyway. Because all these guys, too, is talk behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden, magically, a guy doesn't want to be with their team anymore. They're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess you don't want to be here anymore, so we'll we'll look around. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to trade away their future if that's the case. Right. And with Beal being involved as he is, and he's made it very clear that he's making decisions, and he admitted that in the press conference. Ben Standing, again, he's all over the place, apparently. He asked the old with great power comes great responsibility question regarding the team building, the team around him the last couple of years, and how he thinks he handled it. Looking in the mirror, giving himself a review on his GM abilities. So here it is entrusted you with a lot of power from a standpoint of really kind of building the team around you these last couple of years. I'm just wondering from that, from everything you've experienced, what have you, what have you learned about that responsibility and how do you think you've uh, ultimately handled it? Well, I think I've handled it good or solidly. Um, I understand that not everybody in the league has power and control or let's say so in the organization. So it's something I don't take for granted. You know, it's something that I'm very appreciative of and, thankful for um, and just understanding the history of this organization and, uh, you know, going from, you know, John to transitioning to me, like it's been, it's been wild, you know, but I embrace every single step and every moment of it. Okay. So this is a very telling press conference. He's finally admitted, which he really hasn't. And he didn't deny it yet. He denied it earlier on in the same press conference about Scott Brooks, that he doesn't make these decisions, but he's still going to talk to A, B and C, you know, with Leonsis and general manager. So which one is it? He had nothing to do with John Wall, right? Nothing. Hands are clean of this one, I swear, you know, kind of thing. But he just admitted that he has a huge say in all this. But at the same time, he doesn't know if he wants to be on this team. This is this is a disaster, and this is a problem with the NBA in general. You know, he's very appreciative of having the ability to uh, make these decisions or help with these decisions, but what's the end result? What is the end game here, as you like to say? It's because you're allowing players to make decisions. But he's not LeBron James. It's just like, no, but it's just like when you let politicians decide on how COVID is going to be run 
and you don't let the scientists do it. Right. Allow the fucking GM, the people in the office that have been doing this for 30 fucking years to do their goddamn job. Believe me, they want to win just as much as you do. Okay, their jobs are on the line too, you know? Yeah. So what are we talking about here? Have faith in the system. They've brought in Westbrook for you. Which is obviously his decision. Which is obviously his decision. They have no cap space to make any major moves without trading away every asset that they possibly have, whether it be potentially Rui, Thomas Bryant, these type of players that before the season started or even before the Westbrook trade, we said, damn, we've got a couple pieces here that could do some damage. Yeah. And now what? Because you want the smash and grab shit, just like every other big time player does that cannot see the forest for the trees. They want to bring in, well, uh, I had a steak dinner with Paul George. Bring him in. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to get rid of Gafford. These are these are big chips that are going to have to go if you want a big three. So there goes your depth, which you can argue that it wasn't the greatest anyway. But at the same time, you're still looking at a fourth or fifth seed, even if you bring a third guy in. Like DeMar DeRozan is a guy that's rumored. And what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this? Matt. Unless this team brings in fucking Achilles, (laughs) this team will never rise above a four seed, okay? The East is locked. Beal is not that good that he can raise a team. Look at Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Look at their personnel. They don't have world beaters. They've got a great backcourt. Shit, our backcourt is better than theirs. Not in the playoffs. No, no. But what I'm saying is... Everybody take a quick comparison of the roster with Phoenix versus the roster with Washington. Now, you can't tell me, give or take on a couple of positions, that they're glaringly better than Washington is. Beal just ain't that good, everybody. Get real. All right? I think he's a really, really good player. But he has not done enough to have a franchise by the balls like this. No, no chance. No chance. And he's a great offensive player. You can't deny that. But he doesn't play defense. He doesn't make the other players around him better. Nope. He's basically like Christian Okoye at this point, going against three guys, going to the basket. He's like a rich man Lou Williams, Matt. Yeah. Okay? He would be, like, in his later years, when he gets, like, he loses a step, He's going to be one of those guys that comes off the bench and can put it in the bucket. He better learn how to shoot threes again. Yeah, he better get that <laughs> part back. Maybe he should go with Wall and stand around three-point range like he did the first three years. But that's what he is. He doesn't make his team better. He gets buckets. He's a great scorer. He does some amazing things on the basketball court. I'm not denying that. But to put your entire chips in the Beal basket just because you've got nothing else is the wrong move. And at this point in time, with the way he's acting and this nonchalant, laissez-faire attitude about saying he doesn't, whatever they want to do, they do, but they better do it for me, all this shit, I say, you know what we need to do, Mr. Beal? We need to see what the fuck we can get for you, and we're going to be in the driver's seat on this and see what the fuck we can do, whether it be the Blazers, whether it be the Lakers, whether it be the Bucks, whoever the fuck wants him, get what the hell you can and get the fuck out of Dodge because this team ain't never going to go anywhere. They're not better than half of the league, Matt, and they're not magically because they all of a sudden decide to bring in fucking, I don't know, Jimmy Butler. Ugh. They're all of a sudden magically going to be this force to be reckoned with. It's just not going to happen. No, and and I totally agree. I think he's in the last year of his contract with a player option after that. He's going to opt out. You have to get what you can from him right now, this minute, this offseason. You will get a lot for him. And I think that with a better coach, (laughs) goes without saying, Scott Brooks needs to go. But they've created a monster with Beal. And he's not as good as he thinks. And he will never elevate the rest of his team. Therefore, he needs to go. I don't hate Beal. I mean, you know, you're, you've got a lot of problems with him right now. But the fact that, again, new information that it's come out that basically he knows he's running shit. He never admitted it before. Now we know 100%. We knew, but we didn't know. Now he even is so confident to the fact that 
He knows he's running shit. He's just telling the press, yeah, whatever, figure it out. He needs to be traded immediately. And that's the only chance that this team has to rise above anything but a six or seven seed at this point. And even if it doesn't, Matt, even if it doesn't, at least at that point, you have options. Right now, you have no options but to appease Beal. That's the only option you have. It's a one-lane road, and at the very least, by getting rid of Beal and getting some assets, it opens doors and windows for other players to come in and see where it goes from there. But right now, this road is to nowhere. Totally agree, Noel. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. We're on all major podcast platforms. Please rate, review, and subscribe. If you like this show, please share it on social media. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, the Facebook group, and our website, BeltwaySportsBros.com. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you on Friday.